Welcome to Taxlaw GH and welcome to our video where we solve um, past exam questions or real life past exam questions on employment income taxation. Here, all we are going to do is we are going to apply the principles, the rules, the concepts we have learned over the course of our employment income taxation videos to solve an exam question. And let's see how well we understand the rules and most importantly, let's learn how to approach an exam question. So without wasting any further time, we are going to approach or solve the question from the November 2019 exam sitting of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana um, Principles of Taxation paper. So this is almost a full question. There was just a D part that related to another area of tax, but both question 3A, 3B, and 3C related to employment. Income. We'll tackle all of them here. And let's see um, how well we understand the concept. Like I always do, I will apply what the law says and that will give you a very good approach or give you an idea of how to approach um, employment income questions or employment income taxation questions. What I'm really interested in is the question C. It has so many things hidden in there that you really need to understand um, the A and B are quite simplistic, so we'll run through them. Then, most importantly, we'll come to C, which you really need to see um, what goes into that. So that in case you are encountering something like that in an exam, you should be able to um, tackle them. So let's look at what A says. As usual, like I say, every question, read the requirement first, and then you can tell what the question is about. So question the A part says... Um, compute his tax liability on over time, right, for the month of January 2019. So at least we know we are dealing with over time. We know we are dealing with um, over time in this particular question. That's for two marks, very little, but it's worth getting. Um, II says in the month of February, he was paid over time total in 500 cities compute his tax liability also on overtime payment. So we know both of them deal with overtime and we need to go ahead and solve this. So let's read a question. It says, can Peter is a junior staff member? This thing means a lot and overtime. I'll tell you what that means shortly. Of Sir James Company Limited. His monthly basic salary is 700 CDs. He was paid overtime total in 50 Ghana CDs. During the month of January. So computers over time. Um, based on this information. And then the second one says. If the overtime payment changes. To. 500 CDs. Instead of the 50 CDs we have here. Then the question is saying. What would the. So instead of the 50 CDs here. If the overtime changes to 500. Then what will the. Tax payable be. Great. Then the B part says Amos is a senior staff member. Oops. So Amos is a senior staff member of Sims Company Limited. His monthly basic salary is 1490 He was paid over time totaling 650 during the month of January, what's the tax implication for three marks? So on over time, we have three marks, three marks, and then two marks. That gives us a total of eight marks on over time. So you might think um, it's an area that is not important. But here you can see the examiner is placing so much emphasis on it to even test it for eight marks. So you must know the rules around over time. Before I start, like I always say, tax is based on law. So let's revise the principles of law. Um on which this question is tested. Let's revise. If you have watched our videos on over time, obviously you would have covered this, but just in case you have a no, no worries. Um, remember we said for overtime payments, there is a rule that says that overtime payments that are made to qualifying junior employees are subject to a certain specified treatment. So, the law also goes ahead to define a qualifying junior employee to be a, so let me do this here, to be a 
junior staff member it doesn't end there whose qualifying employment income does not exceed 18,000 Ghana CDs over a 12 month period. So the law has given us a clear definition of who a qualifying junior employee is. This should round up to 1,500, just in case you want to know, per month. The law has given us a definition first of who a qualifying junior employee is, number one. And the fact that that qualifying junior employee must necessarily be a junior staff member. And that junior staff member, his qualifying annual employment income should be 18,000 CDs divided by 12 will give you a monthly of 1,005. Now, with this information, if an examiner is testing you on overtime, all they are trying to test you on is, number one, do you know who qualifies for the special treatment? And I'll come to that shortly. Number one, do you know who qualifies for the special overtime treatment? Number two, if you know this, what are the rates to apply? And if you know the rates, what will apply in the cases where they don't qualify? So this is all they are testing. It's one provision of law, but for eight marks. It tells you that for tax, it's a law paper, really, and you need to know what the law says. For you to know how to approach the exam the exam question so let's continue let's go back to this a part it says kim peter is what a junior staff member as you can see here so it means kim peter will be a qualifying junior employee because he has met this criteria junior staff member but let's check does he meet the threshold of the qualifying employment income he said his monthly basic is 700 that is less than what the 1500 monthly so it means kim peter qualifies if kim peter qualifies then it means you're going to subject kim peter to the special overtime rules so let's start solving the question then so um, 3a i'm assuming i'm in the exam room so question 3a so computation of um, tax on overtime for King Peter. So I with a monthly basic salary of 700 CDs and the status as a junior staff member Ken Peters 50 Ghana CD over time payment will be taxed as shown below so what's the rule what does the law say we are saying that for overtime payments if the person is a qualifying junior employee then let's revise what we said let me come back here If you compare the person's basic salary, right? What the law says is that if 50%, right, of the person, if the overtime payment exceeds 50% of the person's monthly basic salary, then let's even make it simple. Let's break it down into the simplest level. So if the overtime payment does not exceed, let's start from there, does not exceed 50% of the monthly basic salary then you withhold on the overtime payment at the rate of five percent then if the overtime payment exceeds 50 percent of the monthly basic salary what do you do you withhold on 
the 50% portion at 5% and any excess above that at 10%. I'll take that again. For over time, first thing you need to do is you need to compare to what monthly basic salary. That's step one. Step two is, in fact, let's make it simple. It should be 50% of this, right? Then you compare the overtime payment to this amount. If overtime, so OTP, if overtime payment is less than 50% of the basic salary, then you withhold that word 5%. If the overtime payment exceeds 50% of the basic salary, then two things happen. You withhold the first 50% portion of the basic salary. So first 50% at 5%. Then any excess above this. So excess payment will be at what? 10% withholding tax. This is the rule for overtime payment. But take note, the person must first qualify as what? A qualifying junior employee, which we have defined here. So let's come back here. Because Kim Peter meets the, the rules, we'll apply this to him. So let's do it like this. What is his monthly basic salary? 700 cities, right? Okay, so we'll say 50%. of basic salary will give us what 50% of his 700 CDs will give us what Ghana CD 350 now you can see that his basic salary is 350 you all can see from the question that he was paid what an overtime of 50 Ghana CDs clearly 50 Ghana CDs is less than 350. So we say since the 50 CDs over time payment is less than 350 CDs, that is what 50% of his monthly basic salary then we withhold tax at what five percent over time tax will be what five percent of what the 50 Ghana cities he was paid very simple right so this so this gives you two cities 50 per swiss so this is the answer for ai because what his overtime payment of 50 ghana cities did not exceed what 50 percent of his monthly basic we apply the 50 m um, the five percent withholding tax remember this so always do the check run through quickly here again I'm saying the first thing you need to do is well find 50% of his monthly basic salary. Then compare that to what the overtime payment. If it's less, withhold at 5% like we've done here. So you can see withheld at what 5%. And then here, if it's greater than 50%, what do you do? The first 50% you withhold at what 5%. Then any excess above that should work. Well, would suffer with holding at 10 percent so with that out of the way let's look at the ii part they said in the month of february 2019 kim peter was paid over time total in 500 cities so this time it's not 50 cities 500 cities compute the tax liability on the so tax liability on the overtime payment for the month of february 2019 so ii With an overtime payment of 500 Ghana cities 
the tax on overtime is computed as shown below so as usual let's do the magic what i said is what here let's find again we say 50 percent of monthly basic salary will give us what 50 percent his basic salary has no change remember it is still what 700 cities from here so 50 percent of what 700 cities will give us what 350 cities right now they said the overtime payment is 500 cities the question is does it exceed 50 percent of the basic salary that is yes because 500 cities here is bigger than 350 cities take note here what we had was well, 50 cities wasn't greater than 350 cities so if we gave the whole 50 cities to what a tax of five percent as we saw here the case is different here the overtime payment of 500 is greater than 50 percent of the basic which gives you 350 so you need to do the treatment of what taxing it into two parts a part at five percent and a part at what ten percent so how do we do that we say the tax will be so the tax will be 50 percent of 700 cities will be what 350 cities at five percent that's what the law says because the first 50 percent of the basic salary should suffer five percent so my calculator 0 0.05 times 350 should give me 17 cities 50 pesos but we are not done remember we said the first 50 percent will suffer what five percent and any excess above that will suffer ten percent so if the whole amount they paid was what 500 and we've taken 350 what is left it's simply 500 minus what 350 so we say excess over time which is what 500 minus 350 will give us what ghana city 150 tax will be what this 150 cities at what 10 percent so this will obviously give us 15 ghana cities so the total of our time tax will be the sum of what this 17 cities 50 pesos and then the 15 cities you need to add the two together so we say total tax on overtime equals what 17.50 plus 15 which should give me calculator okay so 32 cities 50 pesos so this is how to compute overtime in cases where the um, overtime payments exceed 50% of the annual basic salary. Now, this question is so good because if you can do this, there is no overtime question that will beat you in any exam. What we've done so far, plus the next one I'm going to do, like no overtime because it covers all potential scenarios. So this first one here is a very basic scenario. The I part here, this one, covers scenarios where the overtime payment is less than 50% of the monthly basic salary. No problem, we've done that tax at five percent if the overtime payment is greater than 50 percent like we've done here then you know there's going to be a split first 50 percent of the basic salary attracts overtime at what five percent then the excess overtime <clears throat> above that suffers what um, withholding overtime tax at 10 percent take note overtime taxes will be final taxes 
so they, they do not go into determining the employee's tax liability again um, after the withholding has occurred now that we know this what else must we do let's go back to the question let's look at the b part so in the b part see what happens they said amos is a senior staff member now it gets interesting because you remember from the top here what did i say i said for over time for you to get this whole um 50 percent of basic salary will attract five percent you must be a qualifying junior employee this thing here and i define qualifying junior employee to be someone who is a junior staff member number one number two that person's annual qualifying employment income should not be more than eighteen thousand cities and obviously number three on a monthly basis, I'll give you 1,005. So this question, what they tried to do is to trick students. Let me show you why. First thing they did was they said he's a senior staff member. Senior staff means that what? He doesn't pass this test. So he fills a junior staff criteria here. Because he's a senior staff. He doesn't qualify. But at the same time, what they did was what? They said his monthly basic salary is, watch, 1490 which is clearly less than what 1500 here so what the examiner is doing is trying to give you some dilemma because you are going to probably remember that oh the figure is 1005 if it's 1490 then he qualifies but no wait a second the person is a senior staff member not a junior staff member so this guy doesn't qualify for this overtime treatment at all at all and the law is clear so they are saying that where someone does not meet this criteria you need to tax overtime payments like every other employment income it doesn't get the special treatment you add it to the total employment income and you tax it accordingly so what are we going to do here i'll show you and if you are a smart candidate you realize that these three marks here that you are going to um, try to get they said, what is the tax implication? If you are thinking about it, you'd be like, okay, they didn't ask you to calculate it. They're asking what's the implication. That should give you a clue that they are not looking for a figure. They want a discussion of what you think the treatment should be. So B, oops. Okay. So regarding... the overtime payment made to Amos despite the fact that his monthly basic salary of 1490 is less than the qualifying employment income threshold specified in law if you want to flex you can just mention li2244 but this will not give you any extra marks so um if you want to say it you can just say it that's the income tax regulation that's what prescribes the rules for over time if you don't know it is fine but if you do know it you can mention it um specified in law so it's less than the qualified employment rate specified in law. Yes, of thousand five hundred Ghana cities. Amos is a senior staff member. You've made your first point. Next point is, as a senior staff member 
Amos does not fit into the definition of a qualifying junior employee you can even leave it here as such all overtime payments made to Amos will be added to Amos's total employment income and subject to income tax at the rates provided in the first schedule of the income tax act for resident individuals this is what people call the graduated income tax rate so you can put into brackets um personal unless we make it individual individual income tax rate i don't like to use the term graduated but you can right so what it means is that his payment of 650 so as uh, let's say all over time payment made to him was yeah so that's it yeah you can end here really so this will cover the treatment and it's for three marks to my mind when the question is for three marks just make three points put three points across if they're asking for a treatment put three points across here and then so here our first point was this one where we said that what his monthly basic salary despite the fact that it's 1490 and it's less than the 1005 in law amos is what a senior staff member he's made one first point then we said as a senior staff member he doesn't fit into the definition of a qualifying junior employee you've made a second point then we are saying that what will be the impact as such all his payments will be added to what his total employment income and subject to tax in the same manner as his other employment income like his basic salary his allowances and all of that so this is how you are required to treat um overtime payment like i said if you can do this particular question trust me take my word for it there's nothing that can beat you when it comes to overtime in any tax exam it covers comprehensively what the law requires you to know so you are in safe hands when it comes to overtime let's look at what is dearest to my heart the c part this question right here it has a lot of um tricks in there i love the question because it tests so many topics in fact it tests the concept of residence and non-residence if you are not reading the question carefully you miss it so let's let's look at that my personal um favorites i'm gonna try and wipe most of these guys away all right all right so we have a clean slate again so here the guy is called lord Pakro. he was seconded to ghana so first thing that should come to your mind is is he even resident or non-resident for income tax purposes right he was seconded to ghana from the crop science institute in usa as a crop um, scientist to the crop research institute in ghana for a period of five months why is this important i'll tell you shortly five months starting from first august 2018 he was based so that the first thing you need to take notice he will be in ghana for five months and the rules for persons who are not citizens of ghana visiting ghana is that what 
if they are in Ghana for a period of what 183 days or more, that is when they are deemed to be resident. The presumption here is that because the question has been specific, that will be in Ghana for five months, you need to focus on what they've told you. 183 days roughly comes down to six months, all things being equal. So if he needs to be in Ghana for six months or more before he is resident, and the question says he was in Ghana for five months, then ladies and gentlemen, Lord Pakro will be deemed as a non resident for this question and it will make so much difference because even the tax rate you apply would be very different so this is where i always say for tax when you read the tax exam question every single word matters because if you miss one word you are pretty much in trouble right so he was in ghana for five months and he is non-resident if you go and apply the rate that's um, the individual rate of first amount at zero next at this you get it wrong you need to use the flat rate which i'll tell you shortly which is 25 percent anyways um so for a period of five months starting from first august 2018 look at the next bomb they are dropping he was based at nyangpala which is in the northern part of ghana one of the farming sites of the crop research institute if you have watched our employment income tax um, lecture videos what did we say we said that if someone is provided accommodation on the field operation or the field where what the business activities or care that employment or that accommodation provided will be exempt from tax so if he is given accommodation and that accommodation is provided on the farm site, then no tax will apply. Here, watch it carefully. First thing that should have hit your mind is what? He's coming as a crop scientist. So you should start thinking about farming, farming, farming. They said he came to Crop Research Institute, okay? Then they said he was based at Nyangpala, one of the farming sites. So it means that is where he'll be based, that is where he'll live. If the question provides any employment income, any accommodation to him, then that accommodation will not be subject to tax because it's accommodation on a farming site. So don't be too excited and you see accommodation and say, okay, I know the rates to be 10% of total cash emolument. No. Take your time and ask yourself, is the examiner trying to communicate something to you? Here they are. So you need to be really careful. We need to subject um, this um, accommodation benefit to a special treatment of not taxing it. All right, so like I always say, we've read the preamble. Let's come and read the requirements. Required is what? Determine Lord Parko's chargeable income. That's number one. And number two, his tax liability, if any, during his stay in Ghana. He said, produce the related notes guiding your determination. So you need to tell them how you arrived at your answer. All right, now that we know what goes here, they said his conditions of service were at follows. Salary, 600 per month. Please take note, he was here for, so times five months. Expatriate allowance of 2,000 CDs is per month, so times five months. Risk allowance of 1,000 CDs per month, this also be times what, five months. If you forget and you either multiply by 12 because you are used to doing that in your exam, you still get it wrong. Remember, he was here for five months. This is where it gets very interesting, this paragraph here. He was provided with a Finished bungalow. This will not matter because what? He was on the farming site. So take note, if it was another question where he was not on the farming site, then you say finished bungalow we equate to what the law calls what? Finished accommodation. So what does the law say? It says it will be valued at what? 10% of the total cash emolument of the employee. But here, because he's on the farming site, we'll disregard that provision entirely and not subject this to tax. So let's say you missed it, you missed that point, you would have been in trouble, you're going to compete 10% of total cash emolument, and your answer will be wrong. So please be careful. So, finish Bangalore, but won't apply any tax to it. He was given also a Toyota pickup vehicle with driver and fuel. 
for both official and private activities. So here, there's an element of both private and official, so we need to tax the amount. If it was solely for official, then the default is you typically don't have to what, subject this to tax because he's using a car to do official work. But here he can use a car for both his personal and his what, um, his private and his official stuff, so you need to tax it. So remember, they've said this word both official and private. What is the rule for what driver with vehicle in full? Remember we said this word 12.5% of total cash emolument up to a maximum of what 600 ghana cities per month if you don't know any of these it means you need to watch the videos and employment income tax is based on law it's based on principles it's not based on someone solving a question somewhere everything i'm doing here is based on what a law has said and in our tuition videos we've established the principles of law clearly so please ensure you know your stuff before you even attempt an exam question. So all of these things I'm quoting here, we've covered them extensively, every single thing you need to know in the videos. So if you haven't watched them, please make sure you do um, before you sit your exam. So the rule is driver vehicle in full is 12.5% of total cash emolument, but it's capped at a maximum of what, 600 CDs per month. It comes all the way with what? It comes all the way down where there's no driver, but it's just vehicle in full then it's 10% of total cash emolument up to a maximum of what, 500 CDs per month in that order. All right. In addition to the above, the parent company agreed to meet his commitment at home during his six-month stay in Ghana. So here it gets funny. They said he was seconded to Ghana for five months. So it means his employment was for five months however they said during his six months stay in ghana so does it mean that at this point he became resident that's one thing you need to think about does it mean um he became resident at this point but technically they are saying that in addition to the above the parent company agreed to meet his commitment at home during a six-month stay in Ghana, 1200 per month, the average exchange rate was what? $1 is 5 CD. That's what we use. But remember that the employment contract covers five months. So even though he stayed in Ghana for six months, what the question is saying that he was seconded for a five-month period. So it means his contract will cover five months. Agreed? His contract will technically cover a period of five months. So remember um, this as we do the um, numbers. Anyway, so let's go back to the question and see what we can do for Mr. Lord Paco. All right. So C again. So Lord computation of chargeable income for the which year was it 2018 year of assessment all right so what do we have here there are things that go into his computation so we can even have um ghana city another ghana city for totals right so First thing we are given here is his salary, which is what? 6,000 times what? 5. 5 months. So his basic salary, this should give us 6,5, should be 30,000 CDs. All right, 
then we add benefits in cash so the first benefit we have is what expatriate allowance which was given us to be two thousand per month so for five months This will give us what? 10,000 CDs. Then it was also given risk allowance, which was what? 1,000 CDs times five months, which will give you 5,000 CDs. Right? Then the other benefit in cash was given is the one down here, which was what the company's agreement to meet his commitment at home during his stay in Ghana. Now, here it's interesting because a student would be right if they use six months, because using that period of six months, um, you can say that he was actually earning um, employment income. But if he was seconded to Ghana for a five-month period, don't forget that the law even says that the person should have what exceeded 183 days. So even if he stayed in six in Ghana six months exactly, he was still non-resident. He should have stayed for more than six months. So my best bet is that this figure of six months here, the examiner meant five. First thing. Um, but even if they say six, does that mean that the um, payments they made to meet meet his family's commitment will be subject to five months or six months. If you ask me, I will use five months because his contract for employment is for five months. The extra one month can be under a separate computation if you want to determine his tax liability. But when it comes to his employment, he was seconded for a period of five months, really. So let's let's use that um, to determine the treatment accordingly. All right, so. Um, Let's do this. So it's going to be payments for home commitments How much was he paid? He was paid Okay, this was in dollars So, we have, he was paid 1,200. I'm using five months. Then times what? Five CDs to convert from um, dollars to Ghana CDs. So, 1,002 times five times five should give me 30,000 CDs. I need to add this 30 to the 5,000 to the 10,000. That give me 30, 35, and um, 45, right? So this gives me 45,000. Then I add it to the 30,000. Should give me 75,000. And this gives me my total cash emoluments someone may ask why is this relevant it's relevant because the quantification of benefits in kind like rent and motor vehicle will be based on the total cash emolument figure right so we need to specify this clearly and why are we adding the payment for home commitments to the law is clear section 4 it says all gains and profits from unemployment should be part of what an employee's employment income. So here, even though they are making payments to the USA, it was derived because of his employment. And as a result of that, we are going to use what this um, as part of his cash emolument. He received a cash payment, even though it was paid outside Ghana. Okay, so now we need to add 
his benefits in kind. All right, the first one is accommodation benefit. Let's put here note one, then we write here dash or nil. So let's come to note one at the bottom. I hope I'm leaving enough space. So note one, then you write Lord Parker lives on lives on the farm site as such all accommodation benefits would not be subject to income tax as part of his employment income okay so you said why in note one so the next benefit he was given is if you remember they gave him a furnished bungalow, which will be exempt because on the farm side, they give him a Toyota pickup vehicle with a driver and four. So next is what? The moto vehicle benefits. You can add a note too if you want. So here, the law says what? 12.5% of total cash emoluments which you computed as what right here 75,000 right of 75,000 that'll give us what right my calculator 12.5 percent of 75,000 will give me 9,375 cities right and we'll say restricted to what 600 cities per month so let's check if that is higher or lower we pick the lower of the two so we're straight to what 600 times what five that give me what three thousand so i pick the three thousand figure as my um benefit in kind for this guy so the 3,000 is what becomes my benefit in kind. And if I look through the question, um, that is all when it comes to benefit in kind. So let's go and complete note two. So we say note two, Lord Parkhurst Moto Vehicle Benefit has been restricted to 600 Ghana cities per month as provided by law say instead of the 12.5 percent of total cash emoluments quantification all right so what else that's it let's add this gives us three thousand add it to seventy five thousand that should give you um seventy eight thousand so we can call this his what accessible employment income now because the question did not mention that he contributes to social security take note that in practice um expatriates 
may be required to contribute towards our mandatory pension schemes. And when they are leaving Ghana, they can get what, what we call the emigration lump sum on their way out. So here we need to state that what? Um, note three. There is an assumption that Lord Pacro did not contribute to any of Ghana's mandatory social security and pension schemes during his stay in Ghana. Okay, so with that assumption out of the way, we can just say tax liability will be what? 25% of what 78,000 cities will give us what um, calculator 25% of 78,000 should give me 19,500 so that should be, oops, this should be the tax liability. So obviously, remember that here, I know there are students who still think the rate is 20%. Take note, it has changed, um, it's changed for a while now. So remember, the rate for non-residents is no longer 20%, it's 25%. Um, and it's important that you remember this. For those who are interested, the rate was changed to 25% by, I think if I remember correctly, it was um, at, uh, at 973 of 2018. This amended the Income Tax Act 896, the first shadow, and we um, increased the rate to 25% from 20%. So yes, 973, that should be it, yeah. So you can just check it out. Um, it's been this new rate has been enforced since twenty eighteen. So please don't use twenty percent, um, and that should be fine. I think the examiner's report mentioned that a number of students are still using twenty percent. Please don't be one of them. The rate for non residents is twenty five percent. So that's it. Um, we've gone through a full exam question on employment income. Obviously, we'll look at um other questions on employment income, different types, different areas in subsequent videos but for now this should be our coverage of employment income if you have any questions obviously um don't hesitate to leave them in the comments um and i'll jump in there to respond but here we've covered over time we've covered an issue that bordered on residents non-residents we've covered accommodation benefits that will be exempt because the person's on a farm we've looked at um what else yeah so this was the main issue so remember easy but there are rules you need to what have at your fingertips with the right rules in front of you you should pass tax very easily tax is very easy like i always say it's based on rules it's based on law so arm yourself with the knowledge and you definitely pass your exam so until our next video um let's end here if you love this video as usual please don't forget to smash the like button and don't forget to share this video with the new entire network. I'll catch you in the next video.